Well, hello, tubers, tubettes, various crazy people. Welcome back to the little channel. Um, the inspiration for this little video is from a conversation that I had a couple of days ago with one of my friends who's single and is pursuing a relationship with someone here in the Philippines. And so he was telling me the story about how he had set up a, a rendezvous or an appointment, if you will, to meet a woman. He had been chatting with her. And lo and behold, um, when the scheduled time and place came, he showed up at the place at the right time, and she didn't. She just no-showed him. And five or ten minutes later, he got a hold of her, and she came up with some excuse as to why she couldn't, couldn't go. And he's scratching his head saying, this just doesn't make sense. And I told him to relax, you know, that everyone that I've met personally, including myself many times, has been through that experience. None of us can put our fingers on why that dynamic happens out here. Um, it just, you know, just on the surface, it doesn't make sense. It's rude, number one, just to say, I'm going to meet you and then don't go. Or at least call and say, hey, I can't make it or something's changed. Let this guy drive all the way to where he drove to. Um, set aside, you know, that part of the day and then just blow him off. Why they make those, why they do this is beyond us. Um, none of us have been able to put our finger on it. But I think I've got the, uh, I've, I think I've got the winning one. <laughs> I thought I would share it and it just this is a memory that is about three years old and I'd, I'd forgotten about it until he told me that story and I started thinking about yeah when I was single I was trying to meet this girl she no showed me and this one no showed me but then I've got the coup de gras of no shows so what had happened was about six or seven months into being here I decided that, you know, because part of my master plan was to travel around from island to island to island. And for some reason or another, that didn't happen. My first six or seven or eight months was filled with mistakes, snafus, <laughs> delays, you name it. And, uh, uh, but after all that, probably around month eight or nine, I was ready to start bopping around to some islands. And I wanted to go see Bahal, or I wanted to go see Siki Hor, or I wanted to just go to even Manila, um, Cebu, Andrew City, this, that, and the other. And at that time, when I was single, I was chatting with different women online. And one woman contacted me, and she did live in Angeles City. And she said, um, when I first talked to her, she said, hey, I want to be totally honest with you. I said, okay, that'd be a nice change. <laughs> she said, I used to work in a bar. And she didn't have to go any further. I knew what that meant. I said, okay. And she says, I also have a child. And uh, he was fathered by a foreigner. And the foreigner just went back to wherever he came from. So I'm a single mom, and I used to work in a bar. And I want you to know that up front. And I said, fair enough. And I actually, my respect meter went up with that woman because she was not, you know, pretending to be something she wasn't. So her and I continued this online conversation off and on, and she kept saying, you know, I'd like to meet you. Why don't you come out to Angeles? And I thought, I told her, I said, well, I really just can't afford it right now. Um, I've had some setbacks, but as soon as I get some money together, um, Angeles is as good as any. You know, it's as good as Siki Hor, it's as good as Bahal. It's as good as any other place. I've heard about it. I knew what it was. I knew it was kind of like the, uh, um, the red light-ish kind of city that's in the Philippines. Um, and that in and of itself did not really trip my trigger. I had come from Vegas, which was full of its, you know, um, bars and nightclubs and gentlemen's clubs. So that was nothing new to me. I had lived in, um, in Thailand, near a place called Bangla Road, which has zillions of bars and go-go places and all that. 
And you know, once you've seen it, it's when you first see it, it's like, wow, gee whiz, look at this. But you live there for a year like I did, and um, it just becomes like, you know, oh well, it's just there. Um, it doesn't trip your trigger. And that's not really ever been my thing anyway. Um, so when her and I had this conversation, she was asking me, you know, what do you like to do and what do you like to eat and this and that and the other. And I was telling her, I like to do this, I like to eat that, I'd like to see this, I'd like to see that. I said, I'm really not interested in going to a bar and spending the night there um, looking at the girls and all that. That's just, you know, been there, done that and got the t-shirt. And she said, well, gosh, you know, if you, I like sushi and uh, we were agreeing on all these foods that we like. And she would kept assuring me that she knew of this place to go to. And if you did want to go to a bar, she had friends that worked there still, and we could go there and have a good time. And then during the day, there was this place to go to and rah, 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 rah. And I said, you know what? Sold. I'll come out and see you. And so about a week prior, Prior to going, I booked a flight, which took me to Manila, and I had to take a bus to Angeles. I've since found a much simpler route to get there, but <laughs> it's neither here nor there, is it? So, and during that week prior to going, she was calling me, texting me, um, not bothering me, but being very proactive about, wow, I can't wait to meet you, we're going to get together, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And I made it very clear. I said, listen, I'm not expecting you when I come out there that you need to feel obligated to like stay with me. You know, I really want to just go and hang out with you and we'll have a good time, hopefully. And you can take me to this restaurant. You can show me this place. And in my little mind, I was thinking it would be great to have somebody that knows the lay of the land. And having her being a pretty girl doesn't hurt. And I'll buy her lunch, and I can buy her dinner, and if she needs a 500 pesos or whatever to pay for a babysitter, I can take care of that. And I just allocated some money for all that. So the day came, and I went to Angeles, and like I said, five times a day prior to going, she contacted me minimum. 20 minutes before getting on the plane, she was validating everything, and she had recommended a hotel called the Savannah Hotel which I thought was a really nice hotel. I checked it out online. It was within my budget. I think I booked it for two nights and um, was really looking forward to the trip. So she, she was asking me, what time are you going to get in? What time will you be here? And I said, I think I'll get there about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know. I'm not sure how it's all going to work out. Sure enough, got on the plane, got on the bus, got to the Savannah Hotel, checked in. It was everything it was reported to be, plus more. I really liked the hotel. It was really nice and a good deal for the money. And so I, I rang her up and I said, well, I'm here. You know, I've made the trip. And why don't you come on over? We'll grab a drink and we can go for a walk or we can go to lunch. Or, I mean, we can go to dinner. And she said, well, uh, I, I, I don't have a babysitter. And I thought, really? We've been talking for over a month. You called me 20 minutes before I got on the plane. You knew where I was going to be here, and you didn't have the forethought to arrange a babysitter. Well, I've been there and done that. I know how it goes. This is not the first time a woman has told me she's going to be somewhere and not show up. So I didn't let it bother me. I said, okay, no worries. It's confusing me. I don't understand it. I don't get it, but so be it. So that evening, I just kind of walked around. I went to a place, I think called Phillies or something like that, and kind of a sports bar, I had a bite to eat. I took a look around the town. It was everything I knew it was going to be. Um, same old, same old. And um, was tired from the trip. So that evening, I just went back to the hotel. Um, I think I had a dinner there. They had a pool. Um, I went and sat out by the pool for a little bit, played or jacked around on my phone, and went to bed. That was that was my first night. And I told her, I said, you know, tomorrow's a new day. We'll just try it all over again. <clears throat> try to get a sitter. So tomorrow comes. I have breakfast. I give her a call up. Say, well, I'm ready to rock and roll. Let's go. Let's go 
do this. You know, let's go make it happen. And she said, okay, I'll, I'm leaving in an hour. And something in the back of my mind said, no, she's not. <laughs> so I said, all right. So I just went and basically retraced my steps from the day before. I was looking around, um, walking up and down the street. Again, it wasn't anything I hadn't seen before, uh, especially in Thailand. And never went into any of the walking street bars or anything. And I'm a day person, so these kind of places don't really fit my M.O. But I was going to make an exception this one time. So she came, um, she came back online and said, well, I'm sorry, but um, I, just, I just can't get there. Blah, blah happened. Okay, no worries. And went back to the room, changed, went down to the pool, just hung out there, relaxed, had a bite to eat. And I said, okay, one last chance. I said, this is, this is it. I'm giving her a call. And if she shows, she shows. If she, she don't, she don't. And, well, she don't. Uh, another reason not to show up. To this day, I am confused about that. Uh, how that can happen, why it happens. What I ended up doing was something that was totally kind of out of character. Because I've been to Vegas, because I've been to Thailand, I lived in Vegas, because I've been to Thailand, I know how the game works in the bars. Um, either in Vegas or in Thailand or anywhere else, they're clip joints and they're going to empty your pockets and they're going to take advantage of you. And I was fully prepared for that that night. <laughs> in fact, I said, you know what? This would be like going to space to uh, Disneyland and not riding Space Mountain. I'm here in Angels. I've got to go into a bar. I have to at least, you know, satisfy that. Say I've been there and I've done it and I've got the t-shirt. And that's exactly what I did. About 10 o'clock that last night that I had in town, I, uh, I didn't go to Walking Street. I never made it that far. I was walking towards there and there were all these other little bars along the way. And I poked my head in one and didn't like the vibe and another one and another one. And like the fourth or fifth one, I said, well, this looks cool. And it looked, you know, friendly, if you will. And I went in. And the usual thing where the ladies come up and they're talking to you about this, that, and the other. And um, uh, they're all telling you how wonderful you are and they want you to buy them a drink. And I just allowed that to happen. And totally out of my character, I just got completely blottoed. <laughs> I was having drinks. They were having drinks. We were laughing. We were having a great time. We're out to this special place we had to go and smoke cigarettes. And the whole thing was just, you know, one nutty bender that I hadn't been on in years and I haven't been on since. And um, I, the funniest thing to me was I had to, um, I had gone in about 10 o'clock at night and I'd taken the money that I'd set aside for this woman that, you know, for the lunches and this and that. And I just blew it all on the bar until it was gone. And then it was time to go. And when I walked out, it was about 6 in the morning and the sun was coming up. <laughs> My mouth tasted like a train had driven through it. <laughs> My clothes were all, all sweaty, unbuttoned and untucked and, and <laughs> shit all over. <laughs> and the sun was like walking. I felt like a vampire, you know, going like this. And I had to limp down to the hotel and they took one look at me like, yeah, <laughs> another one bites the dust. And so about three hours later, I had to get myself organized because I had to get yet on another freaking bus and go back to Manila and come home. One of the most painful rides home I've ever had with a hangover that I hope I never duplicate again. But anyway, that was just kind of a little tale about my lost weekend in Angeles City with the girl I never got to meet. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video.